Hello! Welcome back to the sewing room. I'm Lara and I'm going to talk to you today about taking stitches out. Um, sometimes people call it ripping stitches. I've talked a lot about how to put stitches into fabric, but being able to take them out without harming your fabric uh, is important too and there are many ways to do it. Some work better on some fabrics than on others, um, but I'm going to show you my top three favorite ways to take stitches out of fabric today. If you are sewing something that you know you're going to want to take out later, there are a couple ways to make it as easy as possible. First of all, use the longest possible stitch length that you can manage. Uh, in this case, I've, this is the longest that machine can do. And also, uh, if you can, if you have two threads of the same kind of a thread and the same weight of a thread, but different colors, if you use those, uh, one in your bobbin, one color, one in your top thread, a different color, it will be a lot easier uh, to take out later because it's always going to be easiest to take out stitches from the bobbin side. In this case, my white thread is my bobbin side. And I've also left a nice tail here and we'll see if this works. Ideally, in theory, I should be able to pull on this tail until the thread breaks. Gently reopen, unkink everything, take a look. Okay, then I can start from the top. Here's my top thread. I'm gonna pull on that until it breaks. That broke a lot faster, if you can tell, because it's just a little more tension from the way it sews. And then hopefully my thread on the bottom is still long enough that I can just keep doing that until the whole seam is undone. Which again, this is long stitch length. Um, I set it up with a tail on the end um, and uh, made that super easy, right? That won't take very long for me to take that all the way out. Now what if you haven't left yourself a tail uh, to pull on? Well, sometimes you can still kind of get it, but it can be hard to grip. So one of the tools I like to use is, I've mentioned this before, is my kind of sewing room MVP, is my forceps or my hemostat, easy for me to say. Sometimes if you have a thread tail and it's just not long enough, you can grab it with this guy. So instead of trying to pinch it with your fingers, you're pinching it with the tool until it breaks. And then the procedure is just the same. Oh, that did not work very well. Looks like I got a little knot. Okay, if I have a knot on the end, I grab my scissors, open that up, try that again. Boop. You don't have to pull till it breaks, so that's what I do. <laughs> I figure that's the end of the road for that little bit of thread. I can pick that up and keep going. Now, if you say to me, Laura, I, I don't have one of these things. Well, first of all, you should, but if you don't, that's okay. There's still many options. Another one, if you don't have, you know, if you haven't left yourself your thread tails, or maybe you didn't even know you needed to take the stitching out. Maybe you realized you made a mistake and have to take it out. Well, another way to do it is you find your the end of your seam and you just gently pull until you see, okay, that's... Sometimes it just starts to pull out, which is nice. And so then you can get yourself a tail that way. Um, Another way is, again, try to find which side is the bobbin side, if you can, and using uh, a seam ripper of some kind. Now this is uh, the kind of seam ripper I like because the blades are replaceable. You do have to be quite careful because it is razor sharp. Now there are several different uh, makes and models of these, but you're basically looking for, sometimes they're called super heavy duty or professional or super professional. Uh, seam rippers and it basically looks like that and it, I think it's essentially the same thing that they use like for surgeons <laughs> when they're cutting open stitches um, so you do want to be careful because it is very sharp but take your seam ripper 
and from the top side and this will how how spaced out this is will depend on several factors you know how stiff is your fabric how big are your stitches but basically just every once in a while I'm cutting the thread put that away always put the cap on it when you put it away for safety because again razor sharp and then theoretically from my bobbin side hopefully I will now be able to pull and maybe even not break the thread oops Oh, well, it did break, but eventually. And so then it comes off a lot easier, but then you do have these little bits of thread. What do you do about those? I'll, I'll get another tool for that. All right, sometimes, and I'm gonna say not all the time, but sometimes you can use a lint roller to get these little bits of thread off. And I said sometimes, because this frankly doesn't usually work for me. Well, of course it's working today. <laughs> And so voila, uh, you can of course pick them off uh, one by one individually, but that's annoying. Um, if the lint roller isn't working, sometimes you can use an eraser, a literal eraser, to lift the thread up off of the fabric, which will let your lint roller grab it. Now if this seems tedious and silly for four inches of thread, um, it seems a lot less silly if you have to rip a whole skirt panel off of something and deal with all those little threads. Like that can be very annoying. Last option is to actually cut the threads using really almost any tool. Again, um, you can use this guy. Um, I sometimes in a pinch will use these really nice sharp scissors. Um, but basically the goal is you kind of pull the seam open a little bit and when it stops letting you pull it open, that's when you snip and then you pull it again and then you can snip and you can pull it again. Now this, you know, in some ways this is easier than some of the other methods. Whoops. You don't need much specialty equipment, but you are left with lots of little bits of thread. And if that's the kind of thing that bothers you, this might not be the best method <laughs> for you. Um, yeah. Now the style of seam ripper that I actually don't have, and I actually searched high and low in the sewing room today looking for one, but I don't have one because I don't use them, is the one that often comes with your sewing kits or with your sewing machine, where it's kind of looks like this, but then it has a uh, a deeper hook and a, usually a little plastic ball on a prong facing this way. Um, I have a photo in one of my books. I'll show you the photo. And what's interesting about those is if your fabric is tough enough, sturdy enough, they're actually designed to be used where you insert the ball of that little plastic ball into the seam here and then just push and push the seam open. Now I can do that with this style too because you can kind of see the sharp bit on this is the whole bottom of it. The sharp bit on the other style is actually kind of in the crook between the little plastic ball and the edge. It looks like the sharp edge. Um, this one has a tip, the, the whole tip is sharp. So again, if you're confident enough, you can just gently kind of hit each one. Now, I prefer that pulling open method I showed you first because it's less scary frankly I'm, I'm less likely to cut the fabric and the other problem with the little ball style ones um, is that they that little sharp area gets dull very very easily um, so what happens is you'll be using it one day and you'll push a little harder to get through the stitch and you'll you won't realize you're actually pushing and cutting into your fabric so that can be um, that can be kind of tough so if you do like that style there's nothing wrong with it but uh, look forward to investing in new ones um, fairly frequently because they do get dull really really fast again why that's why I like these guys <laughs> all right you knew I couldn't do video without showing you at least part of a machine <laughs> um, that last method I showed you where you're basically pushing open the seam with you know whatever you're using to cut it with um, sometimes that can be tougher than it needs to be if the fabric isn't very stiff because you almost want three hands right you've got one hand holding the tool one hand holding the fabric supporting the fabric and then 
in theory, you would love to have a third hand holding the seam nice and tight so that it's easier to cut. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm kind of lacking uh, in the arm department if I'm looking for three. So instead, sometimes I will use my sewing machine kind of as a little bit of a helper. So to do that, what I do is I would set the part I'm ripping under the machine, uh, lower the foot, and I'm not using the needle, I'm not actually, this machine isn't even plugged in, but what that does is it'll gives me something I can kind of pull against. So then I can hold that open and see better and be more confident and faster as I'm cutting that thread. And when I get to the end, I just move it again. Lower that, pick that up, possibly, possibly be too close for the camera to see what I'm doing, so I do apologize if it is not in focus, but just opening up that seam. Now, again, you see I, I, that's fast, but I have all these little loose threads, so I'm going to try both methods. I don't lint roll directly on this part of my uh, table, which I did that once and I learned that this finish is not up to that kind of abuse. So I'm gonna turn the camera off, <laughs> uh, move to a different location and try the lint rolling there. All right, here you go. You can see all my little squigglies of thread. Of course, you could just pick them up, but good Lord, why would you do it with your fingers? That's not, I mean, it's, it's not not working. <laughs> Maybe I'm just too impatient when I try the lint roller. What happens if I hit it with the eraser first? See, the eraser kind of picks it up out of the stitch or out of the seam, which so now it's loose and that's what the lint roller is designed to do. Yeah, because so I like these two tools together, it turns out. Fantastic. <laughs> All right, y'all, Reader's Digest, right here. Oh, there's even one on the cover. That's how valuable. <laughs> Uh, they think these tools are, or how valuable these tools are. Shoot. All right, so we can see right on the cover of one of my favorite sewing books is the seam ripper with the plastic ball style that I was talking about. And then also, and my absolute, oh my gosh, this is the book I cannot do without. Uh, there is one there too. This one is from Clover, which is a company that I also love. So if you look closely, I'm gonna zoom in. Uh, this book cover actually won awards, and you can see why. It's amazing. The book's amazing, too. Thank you so much, uh, Liz Haywood, for putting this book out in the world. But anyway, um, as you can see, a uh, nice solid handle. You, you do want a nice big handle that's going to make it less tiring on you to use this tool. And there's the plastic ball I was talking about. So again, if you have a really sturdy fabric and you're feeling confident, you can put the ball side into the seam and then push. Uh, to remove those stitches. The sharp part of this instrument, the really sharp cutting edge, is actually in this little crook. Oh, it's very easy to think it would be this bit, but it's actually, this is the sharp part. So just remember that when you're working on cutting a uh, thread or stitching or anything that you're cutting, this is the sharp bit. This bit, this little tiny pokey bit, is more for lifting the ends of stitches out of things uh, individually. So. Those are, that, that can be really useful for that. But when you're actually using the tool the way it's meant to be used, this is the cutting part of the tool so that you're pushing against the seam. Thank you so much for stopping by today. I really enjoy doing these videos and I have a whole bunch more planned. Um, but please subscribe so that you don't miss one. YouTube thinks you're gonna really like the video that it's showing you a preview to right now. All right, thanks, so bye.